1865, Edward Wimper became the first man to climb the Matterhorn. But it wasn't his first attempt. In fact, he'd made seven previous attempts without success. In August 2024, I arrived in the small Swiss town of Fisch on the Matterhorn Gotthard Railway to run the Swiss Alps 100k. Fisch is just 25 miles from the Matterhorn and sits at the foot of the stunning Alesch Glacier, the largest glacier in the Alps and a World Heritage Site. It was warm when I arrived and the forecasts for the race suggested it was only going to get hotter. I spent a little time exploring the town and met up with friends Ben and Carla to take the cable car up to the glacier. It's a stunning location near the summit of Egishorn at nearly 3,000 metres above sea level, with views of the Eiger to the east and the Matterhorn to the west. Both Ben and I had signed up to run the Swiss Alps 100k, whilst Carla would be attempting one of her furthest distances ever with the 50k. As part of our pre-race prep, we decided to check out one of the highlights of the race, other than the glacier, the Aspi Tita suspension bridge crossing the Weisswasser Gorge. Okay, this is really, really scary, but we have to do it during the race. So I'm doing it now to get used to it. It's about a 120 meter drop down here. Keep going, and you got it. That was horrendous. That was that was oh. bad, wasn't it? Oh. Did really good. Well done, you. You all right? You've got to go back again. I know. Bit quick. Do you want to talk to me about that then? Better the second time, but still. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So we've just been up to the uh, suspension bridge to get a feel for it before the race. And uh, while we were up there, I realised that I'd foolishly lost the key to my Airbnb apartment. So we decided, and Ben and Carla agreed very kindly to retrace our steps and go and look for it without, you know, thinking there'd be much hope of finding it. And incredibly, we got to the top of where we, where we originally were. And I said, right, it's not here, let's give up. So we started making our way down and I realized I was low on water. So I stopped at the stream, the river, to fill up my bottles. And as I was filling my bottle, Carla here shouted something like, we've got it. And literally where we stopped for me to fill up my water, somebody had placed the key on a rock and Carla found it. Absolutely incredible. It was black magic. <laughs> it was magical. We can't decide what was more scary. The thought of going on the cable car up here, which looked really sketchy, or walking across that bridge, which we've just done. Yeah, I mean, that that cable car as well, it had like a, it was like a cable seat. <laughs> well, we think it may have been a cable seat, where you just have your legs hanging out and you can just look down and see a, you know, several hundred meter <laughs> drop. So yeah, I don't know. But probably, probably the seat, I think, may have been a bit scarier, but who knows? Yeah. The next day was the start of the 160 kilometer race, and it was nice to meet up with Jeff and Audrey. Cool. Uh, can you get along with Stephen? What are you hoping for today, Jeff? I'm not really sure what to expect. I'm just going to go out easy, one foot in front of the other, and just see where this course takes me. You know, We'll see. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be warm, but I know it's going to be beautiful. So just get a little bit of time on feet. This is the man who uh, did UTMB a couple of years ago. And I thought, do you know what? I will note down Jeff's paces, uh, what time he hit the aid stations, and I'll see if I can copy it. I was behind by about an hour after the second aid station. OK. Well. <laughs> <laughs> that was a tough course. This course is going to be very similar, I think, to UTMB on paper, at least. Uh, so yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of using similar, you know, similar time estimates for this one too. I think it's going to be a challenging weekend. Good luck, Jeff. Yeah, thank you.
The first few kilometers and the first climb of the 100 miler is exactly the same as the 100k race. I took the cable car up to the first checkpoint to see the runners come through. So here we are halfway up the mountain on the way up to Egishorn. Uh, this is the first aid station for the 100 miler which has just started but also for the 50k and the 100k. Claire Bamworth, one of the best ultra runners in the world on the climb. How are you feeling? I'm uh, good. You good? Yeah. A bit tired, but good. <laughs> Don't be tired, it's so early. Good luck. Thank you. I then took a train and another cable car to the Rieder Furka checkpoint at 41k. Oh, How many GoPros can we get going at yeah, the same right. time? Yeah. <laughs> I see Inception. one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Go that way. That way up there. So Jeff Pelletier just arrived at aid station uh, 41 kilometers. The aid station is very busy now, lots of people around. How's the first 40k? Not bad. It's hot. Trails gnarly or are they smooth? Uh, but it's a mix. It's a mix. Some runnable stuff, some gnarly stuff, but beautiful views the whole time. So. It was incredibly hot and I was already beginning to worry as I headed back to Fiche to collect my race bib. Just um, registered, got my number, I'm thinking about buying a cap. I've also got my tracker, so we have to put a tracker on. And then there are three places where you can put drop bags. I've only got one drop bag for about, I think it's about 42K. So uh, Blitzingen is my uh, drop bag which is, yeah, about 40k, I think. And now we're going to go to the co-op and buy pasta. Really big, long queue to register. And before we knew it, race day was upon us. At 7.30am, Carla set off in the 50km race. I was more nervous than usual as race start approached. I knew I'd have to manage some pretty challenging conditions, although I didn't for one second imagine not crossing the finish line. How's it going? Yeah, it's okay. Good. Yeah, yeah. It's game time. It is game time. Oh, I'm a bit nervous. Proper runners, you see. Warming up. Pretending to warm up. Good morning, welcome to Switzerland. Welcome to Fisch in Switzerland for the Swiss Alps 100. It's 100K, not 100 miles. The 100 milers went off yesterday. Ben and I are gonna attempt 6,000 meters of elevation gain in the Swiss mountains. It should be absolutely beautiful, but it is going to be very, very warm. We're gonna to have to look after our hydration, um, make sure we don't get sunburned, but most of all, enjoy the fantastic views on this epic race. It's going to be brilliant. So it's going to be a very hot day today. So please hydrate. Take advantage of the aid station. We have a lot of liquids there. Some water, electrolytes, and tobacco, coke, everything. One minute to go to the start of Swiss Alps 100. Uh, ben and I are going to make exactly the same film for YouTube. With, with the same title as well. <laughs> no, we're, we're not going to run the whole race together, don't worry. There will be different views. So you're going off a 5k pace, yeah. aren't you? Yeah. Right, 10 seconds and we're away. Uh, away we go. Okay, let's do this thing. Oh, 
And that was the last I saw of Ben, filming me as he moved off ahead no more than 100 metres after crossing the start line. The apartment I'm staying in is literally about 100 metres up there. <laughs> so just snaking our way up the road in the first climb. Just five minutes in. Slight pinch point here. Just as we go into a bit of a trail, single track trail. Thankfully, the early part of the first climb was in the shade, but I already felt slow compared to those around me. I felt like everyone was passing me, even at this stage. Some sections of the trail were very steep, but in general, the terrain wasn't overly technical. 3.3 kilometres. We've been going for 50 minutes. Uh, nowhere near halfway up the first climb. And it's already really warm. Beyond the tree line now, so out into the sun, paths are wider. We've done 4.8 kilometers. So we have just over two kilometers to the first checkpoint. We've climbed about 900 meters. We have just under 600 meters to go. It's a 1500 meter climb. Just to put that into some kind of perspective for you, Ben Nevis is the UK's highest mountain at 1,345 metres. Our first climb was 1,500 metres, and whilst the foot of Ben Nevis is at sea level, the start of the Swiss Alps 100 in Fiche was already at 1,000 metres. First aid station at just over seven kilometres. We still have just under 300 metres left to climb to get to the top of the climb and another and another three kilometres left to do but this is our first aid station just by the cable car where we come up to go up to Egithorn which is up there oh, I sat there yesterday morning having a beautiful coffee so that climb up was not super technical, some single track, but generally fine, just a long way. So we're now at around 2,200 metres altitude. We've climbed 1,200 from Fiche up to here, and then we've got another 300 to go to get round to the glacier, which is going to be amazing in a minute. I was really looking forward to getting round to the glacier side of the mountain, where I knew there would be some shade from the already intense sun. Two hours, 11 minutes in, nine kilometres done. And if you look in the distance over there, you can see the Matterhorn. I have always wanted to see the Matterhorn in real life because my great uncle Wimper, Edward Wimper, was in the team of the first people to climb the Matterhorn. And if you go to Chamonix, there is a street called Rue de Wimper, named after my great uncle. So the Matterhorn is a little bit special to me. My great uncle's ascent of the Matterhorn has become the stuff of Alpine legend, primarily because of what happened on the way down, when four of the team fell to their deaths after a rope snapped. Some say the rope was deliberately cut, and although the claim was discredited when the rope was found and shown to have been torn apart rather than cut, the story has persisted. I visited the grave of my great uncle in Chamonix and his perseverance and determination to succeed after trying and failing so many times is something that inspires me to keep moving forward, to get up and go again after a knockback and to remember that we are all stronger than we realise. Morgan, hop, hop, hop. alles gut? Alles prima.
two hours 55 in 13 kilometers and we are running alongside this enormous glacier um, and that's Egishorn up there. Hi guys! Yeah enjoying it so far and you know you couldn't ask for um, a more amazing bit of scenery. It's not too hot at the moment, it's nice and cool, you've got the, the coolness from the ice coming off the glacier. Running alongside the Alesh Glacier was immense. I could feel the cold of the ice on my skin. You could even hear the movement deep in the core of the glacier, which travels around 180 metres a year. Just as we turned away from the glacier, I caught up with Carla. So how was the first 15k for you? Oh, it was tough, yeah. Um, I did feel the altitude actually going up, um, but I'm just happy that I got it done and we got the beautiful views of the glacier. How many more climbs has the 50k got now? I think maybe two more. Okay, I but not as tough as that no, one? No, not as tough as that one. So my, really, my aim is just to try my best and see what happens. That is it. Um, because I've, I've not done anything like this before. So I'm taking it really easy yeah. because of the heat um, yeah. and the altitude. Uh, but so far, okay. Brilliant. So just chug chuggling along. Well, good luck, Carla. Yeah, thank you. So, Carla's on the 50K, I'm on the 100. We are, well, we're not quite 15K yet. And the next day session is just around the corner. Yay. Yay. Uh, so that's 15.6-ish K at the um, aid station there. Just got myself a Red Bull, eating some crisps and a bit of apple. Um, and got my water bottles filled up. It's eight and a half K to the next aid station at uh, Bellworld. After the incredible Alesh Glacier came a stunning descent down towards the Weisswasser Gorge. However, the more we descended into the valley, the more the sun was concentrated directly on us. I still felt like I was moving slowly and being passed by too many people. And I couldn't believe that we hadn't yet covered 20 kilometers. You might be able to see something shining just down there. That's a suspension bridge that we're going across. When every step feels like forever And every breath burns wild The river calls me onwards ever like nature's wayward child Just keep moving, keep believing The bridge is drawing near Though my body may be grieving My spirit perseveres There's a bridge across the river Hiking Trail 39 and the red and white markings here indicate a mountain trail with some technical terrain. Easier trails are marked in yellow whilst the really technical alpine trails which might require crampons and ropes are marked with blue and white. It was a tremendously exciting trail to be on. Trail dust dancing in the over to 21 kilometers in four hours 39 minutes and here we are this is the Aspi Tita suspension bridge which is damn scary but awesome no it's really bad but just just keep looking at the look at the slats just look at the slats you'll be fine I'm trying to run a to get it over with but b because I've done it twice, I shouldn't be scared now. It's perfectly fine. We can do this. It's not a problem. It's just a bridge. He says, talking himself into it. 
I was so glad to have crossed the bridge a couple of times before the race because despite my almost crippling fear of heights, I was able to get across without too much bother. Although with the heat, the fear and the sudden burst of faster running, my heart rate must have been through the roof and I was definitely out of breath once I reached the other side. There's a bridge across the river where the mountain meets the hill. station but it's worth filling up bottles there because you'll get really cold water and just freshening up and then I can just concentrate on getting food at the aid station nearly 25k so we are at the third checkpoint Some banana, there's some more apple there. I've got another can of Red Bull. Thanks, Not sure I want a hot dog just yet. I have to say, the volunteers and spectators around the course were incredibly supportive and enthusiastic, and in the midst of the devastating heat, they brought a smile to my face on more than one occasion. However, there was no denying that we were approaching the hottest and consequently the most challenging part of the race. Get through this next few hours and I could be confident of finishing. We just got to the split point for the 150k, so 28, 29k in, and that's where the split was, just back there. My watch has just ticked over to 30k in 6 hours and 38 minutes. We're on another smallish climb, that 400 meter climb, walking on tarmac and gravel path. Um, I'm starting to wilt in the heat now, it's so hot. It's just after one o'clock in the afternoon and it's really warm. Every time I come to a stream, I am throwing myself in it the head first, getting cold water on me and trying to keep hydrated without feeling sick. I feel okay at the moment, but it's on that, it's on that brink of like, I can feel that my stomach's about to turn if I'm not careful. So, just doing what I can to get up this climb without suffering too much. I mean, it's gorgeous, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. But yeah, we're into it now. This is, this is the, the really tough bit now for the next, I'd say six hours is gonna be baking hot. Just gotta get through it. Just got electrocuted. <laughs> Beautiful cafe down there, very, very tempting to go and get a latte in that cafe. It's coming up to 34 kilometers. Have you ever had the feeling that a race is trying to kill you? From melting under the sun to now being electrocuted, I was beginning to sense this might not be my day. But I was determined to keep moving, however slowly, towards the finish. When you see a bench on an ultra, you mustn't sit down on it. I am very, very hot, but this bench is in the shade. Just a tiny little bit of relief. 67 metres left of this climb. And then I think we've got a couple of kilometres to the aid station.
Thank you to the man with the spray. Danke. That's amazing. Still got 200 meters to descend. So hot. Just baking. One and a half kilometers to the checkpoint now. Down there, I imagine, in that village. Okay, the locals are really good here with the water. So the next aid station is where we get the drop bags at Blitzingen, 5.7 kilometers from here. So we are one hour ahead of cutoff, 4.30 cutoff here. Thank you. Great job, keep going guys. Thank you. I am absolutely shattered. Got a mouthful of crisps, got another Red Bull. Leaving Rakingen, I realised I wasn't moving fast enough and I had to make the most of the flat ground for the next few kilometres. There's no denying how pretty this race is and that much of the ground is perfectly runnable, but now we were exposed to the sun at a much lower altitude, so it felt even hotter and I was throwing up. I tried to run as much as possible and there was a little cooling air coming from the river. But the more I looked at the watch, the more maths I did in my head, the more I realised I was falling behind and I was in danger of being timed out. OK, made it to the checkpoint, but it's just ridiculously hot. Are you all right? Yeah. yeah. Can't keep anything down. Suffering a bit. So this is blitzing and checkpoint where we get our drop bags. Is this soup? Yes, yeah, yeah, Stephen. Hi. We have uh, hey, have waiting soup. on you for the soup. It's pretty new, but it's not so hot. Okay. Yeah. What's the cutoff here? Time five, I think. Do you have a drop bag? Yeah. 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 And the next aid station you have but I mean, the time till uh, seven. Yeah. Till seven. But you have eight k with uh, five hundred meters of elevation. Everything. Is well, we're gonna try. I'm gonna try and get up the hill. Yeah. Thank you to these guys at Blitzingen. Yeah. And uh, we're on our way. Yeah, it's not wrong. Go UK! Go, 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 go! <laughs> go UK! Right. I am. You will do it! Go UK! So I am unbelievably burned to a crisp in the heat. Um, that was the. The drop bag aid station at technically 43k, but I have about 50, 46k on my watch. The sun is still baking hot. So that closes at five o'clock. It's now about 10 to five. I have two hours, 10 minutes to make it 8k. And I don't know if I'm going to do that. I'm. I haven't got any energy to run. Um, oh, the little thing to point out, that's 8K um, with 700 meters of vert. So um, it's a, basically just a climb. I'm hoping it's through the trees, so there's a bit of shade, but I am completely cooked. And also I need to be sick and I can't throw up. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna do what I can, um, but I'm not going to risk my health, so I, I'm not going to push it so that I, you know, have a heart attack or anything stupid like that. I'm not a spring chicken anymore. <laughs> so I'm just going to get I'm going to get out there and do my best and see what happens. It's just absolutely roasting. Now is the time to say, if you're enjoying watching me suffer, and let's face it, that's the reason you're here, isn't it? Then please do subscribe to the channel. These days, you can pretty much guarantee if it's a Film My Run Ultra Race video, it's basically 40 minutes of me moaning about how hot it is, or how tired I am, or usually both. You should consider it a badge of honour if you make it to the end. Now, there's a challenge for you. Yes, yeah, so on my watch, 10 hours, 28 minutes. 45.7 kilometers 
and on this watch it tells me I've got 58 kilometers to go. I must also say a big thank you to Y Food for supplying pretty much the only thing I managed to keep down during the race. Y Food is a meal in a drink and it's like a tastier version of Huel. Not in a good place at the moment. Really need to be sick. Too hot. Worried that I'm not going to make the next cough. Now starting a big climb. Okay, this is last chance saloon now. I have one hour to do 3.6K up 570 meters of vert. Okay, let's just, let's just give it a go. 51 kilometers has just ticked over and that took me 16 minutes. I've got 48 minutes to do 3K. So that's 16 minutes per K and it only gets steeper from here. I'm out, I'm just, I can't push myself any harder up this hill. I'm still ridiculously hot. The sun hasn't gone down yet. It's nice that we're in the shade, but I think, I think we might be dying a bit of a death here. There's nobody behind me. I am the last runner. I'm the last runner. Everyone else has been timed out at Blitz, um, Blitzing and I thought I was the last runner, but there are some people behind me. 11 hours, 50 minutes. 51.6 kilometers. Need to be sick again. Been sick about three times. Can't just, can't keep anything down. It's like UTMB, but it's hotter, it's hotter than UTMB. Or at least I'm feeling the heat more for some reason. Can't do it. Just too tired. Too hot and too tired. I've got 165 meters left to climb. 1.1 kilometers distance. So here's the situation. I've heard from somebody that the cutoff time has been extended. So I've missed the cutoff at seven o'clock, but somebody's just told me they've extended the cutoff because of the heat to 8.30 this evening. Now that means I'll get to the aid station in time, but I have to say I, I've mentally checked out now. I, I thought I was done, that was it, I was, I was, uh, it was over. And I, I can't, I just can't get that back now. I, and I, I kind of don't want to, I'm, I'm done. Do you know what I mean? I'm just done. I'm so tired and it's just, that's it. You know, it's such a beautiful race. So, so gorgeous, the scenery, but I just haven't got any energy. And now, now that I've decided I'm finished, the fact that the cutoff is extended is like that's so disappointing in a way because I feel like I'll let everybody down even more now because what I should do now is get a burst of energy and say okay the cutoff time's been extended let's go for this we've got this now you know just just this I've got this climb so this once you get to this aid station you'd have another thousand meters of climbing <laughs> and then all the way down and then one more climb of 1200 meters in the in the night and I just I just I can't bring myself to do it I, I, I would really love to I'd really love to have that burst of enthusiasm and motivation and energy to to want to do it but I just I just can't maybe I'm getting old I don't know what it is but today I, I have to say I don't think I've done enough training and this might well be a bit like TDS a few years ago where 
I, I just went to sleep on the side of the trail and, and that was because I hadn't, I hadn't trained enough really and I wasn't, I wasn't trained enough for the hills and I, that might be the case today to be honest with you. I managed to trudge the final kilometre to the checkpoint and I lay down in a heap on the grass. I'm actually glad. I don't, I don't feel, I feel a little disappointed, but I'm not disappointed to be stopping. I just want to go to bed. I'm, I'm glad I've done it. I'm glad I've stopped. Amazing view from here. There were a few runners who arrived at the checkpoint after me and continued on in the race. I wished I'd had the energy and motivation to follow them, but on this occasion, I simply didn't. Once the sun had gone down, of course, the temperature began to drop considerably, and I'm disappointed that I couldn't have hung on for just a couple more hours, and perhaps I would have been okay, but it wasn't to be. So it's the day after my DNF at the uh, Swiss Alps 100k. I've come up to the summit of Egishorn just to reflect on what happened yesterday. It's, it's almost as hot today as it was yesterday. And I have to say, I am, I am happy with the decision I made, I think. I mean, I, you know, a DNF is never brilliant. Uh, I would much rather have finished, but given the heat, given the conditions, uh, and given my possible lack of hill training. See, I did, you know, I did the Cape Wrath Ultra, I did the South Downs Way 100, and I did Race to the Stones. In terms of endurance and distance training, that's great. Perhaps in terms of um, elevation training, not so great. And, and maybe I was a little bit fatigued after all those races coming into this, I don't know. But definitely, I think definitely the heat that caused me to stop in the end. Um, I was so tired, I, I was so glad to get to that aid station and call it a day and that rarely happens. You know, normally I do try and finish these things but I had no desire to carry on yesterday at all. I was so happy to stop and, and looking back now, you know, yesterday um, still feels like I'm glad I did it really. Um, there's just a little bit of FOMO about not crossing the finish line. I thought I'd come up here just to see the view. Um, that's the Eiger in the distance over there. The furthest mountain you can see is the Eiger. And then uh, it's a bit cloudy and you probably can't see it, but over there in the distance is the Matterhorn. A couple of days after the race, I took a train to Zermatt to walk a few paces in the footsteps of my great uncle Wimper. Seven times he tried before eventually reaching the summit. I've had my battles with races before this, notably TDS and the Ben Nevis Ultra, both of which I eventually went on to complete. If Edward Wimper can keep going back in the face of defeat, so can I and so can you. I'd just like to thank Jakob, uh, the race director, for inviting me and he has invited me back for next year to try and complete the job. So I am gonna do that. I, I have already signed up with my wife to come back next year and try and complete the job. Really well done to Ben from Time On Feet and Carla for completing their races and uh, Jeff Pelletier who was in the 100 mile race. I do not envy those guys having to spend pretty much two days out in that heat. Uh, so well done to them. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you want to watch uh, the South Downs Way 100, then uh, click that link right there. And I will see you on the start line of our next ultra crazy event next time. Bye bye.